All right, you guys, welcome back to our last class where we're just going to take a look at what you did for the final. Hooray. So I will preface this by saying that you guys all did a great job. You learned a hell of a lot during this course. You can look back through all the contents here. I never restrict access to anything in Google Drive. I may download it for my own archival purposes, but whatever's up here is going to stay up here for a while until basically storage limits become a problem. And at that point, then I'll probably end up removing things. But if you ever want something back, it's very likely that I have a copy somewhere. So just let me know and I'll make it available to you. I was going to go back and look through the concept ideas assignment number three to compare with what you guys have done in your final. But because of our weirdness earlier in the quarter, a lot of stuff is missing in here. It would be a really good idea for all of you to go through the assignments and make sure that your file is still in here. And if it isn't, drop it in there again, just to be absolutely sure that you're getting credit for everything that you deserve credit for. Um, if it's something that you've changed from the original grade, please put it in the revisions folder because those ones I will check as an update. So even if I have a grade for you already, then I'll check these again to see if they deserve more points uh, or some sort of up revised grade, never down. So if this is worse than the original one, you're not going to lose points, so you lose nothing by doing that. But if you're at all unsure that you turned something in the first time, then just pop it back into these folders before Friday. And that's Friday at midnight, so technically before Saturday, right? So before Friday at midnight, because that's when I'm going to start doing all of the grading for everything. Okay? Sound good? And it would be nice to be able to look back and see like, oh, how much have you changed since this point? So a good thing for you personally, if you have all your work still, is to look at the stuff that you were doing at the beginning of the quarter versus the end of the quarter, because it can be really nice to see that progress happening. Let's take a look at what everybody's done. Okay. Uh, one more preface. I actually forgot it. There was a second one. Even though some of this stuff is not going to be as good as you wish it were, You've learned a lot and you're applying it right now for maybe the first time ever. It's normal for you to look at your work and say, oh, I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. I wish it was better in this way. And I am going to be criticizing it as well, but that doesn't mean that you didn't do a good job. Okay. The best thing for you to do to improve beyond this point when you no longer have instruction is to look at people that you admire and copy them. If you can hear them talking about how they did their work, that's way better. If you can hear them talking about how they learned to do what they did, that's way better. But at the very basic level, just copy the work that you admire and try to figure out if you can do this stuff the same way. And that's a really great way to improve. It doesn't take anything more complicated than that. Yeah. Alex. Cool. So we've got our wizard cat. I, I actually missed the fact that his, he was named in the original concept, and a lot of you guys caught that. So Artemis, the magical cat, standing up here with his wizard staff, preparing to uh, attack this multi-headed Cerberus-esque cat ghost, which is freaking terrifying. So that's very cool. So just looking at the use of tools, layout, and stuff like that, I think he did a pretty good job. I can see that he's like floating on what appears to be like a magical disc. I would love it if that magic disc went in front of this tree trunk so that I could see a little bit better that's a magic disc because it appears he's in front of that. So this should probably be as well. And then one little technical thing is just that his hand is on backwards on this side. Since he's got the staff over his left shoulder, we would see be seeing the back of his hand with the thumb on this side, not the fingers. So this would be like he's crossing his um, hand across to the wrong shoulder almost like he's drawing a samurai sword or something like that. No. Yep. Very cool. And I love the, the floaty head demon thing with the, the crazy ears. That's really fun. Right on. So wait, who's this is? Oh, Alex. Alex, do you have any final comments or anything for us? You good? You did a really good job. There he's typing. I see him typing something, so I'll wait. Got the Cerberus head idea from someone else, just tried to make it spookier. Cool. I don't remember whose concept that was, but it's a really neat thing. 
I like it. And I love the, the big portal thing. It looks like you're using maybe one of the custom brushes to achieve the texture as well, which is great. A little bit of special effects glow on the staff. Lots of good stuff happening. Mm hmm Yep. Circle's supposed to be the magic circle. Yep, I got it. Makes sense to me. Cool. That's all right. Yep. Best case scenario is like either get someone to pose for you and take a picture or you try to like do it in the mirror, like pose and then look at your hand and go like, oh, that's how it's supposed to go. All right. Very good. Thank you. Let's go, Alan. Okay, so I don't see Alan in chat, but we've got this nice portrait-esque portal pose where we've got magic mushrooms and purple woods and then a more uh, typical kind of medieval kingdom through the portal. Looks really cool. I believe that he's probably also using some of the special effects brushes for sparkles and things. We never really got into brush creation, but that's something that you should look into as a powerful way to extend your painting ability. The re main reason we didn't get into it is because I find that it's a crutch. A lot of people use way too much and that you should probably learn the basics of painting before you start using all the special effects stuff. But it's a great way to add a little something extra to your paintings and to do certain utility things. And by the way, Control Paint has a, a tutorial on how to make uh, custom brushes, so you guys could look there as well. Right on. All right, very good. Looks like a fun little adventure. Magic Cat. There he goes. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Avial. All right. We've got Artemis, the Magic Cat, up here, hugging his ball of yarn with little kind of spirals of magic stuff. And it looks like these guys are maybe searching for him or angry that he's here. This is cute. Okay. So one technical thing I can see that's a little bit strange is it looks like there's kind of a rough edge around everything. And I think that's probably due to making a drawing and then using a magic wand tool to select and fill areas, which you shouldn't do. Instead, you should make a layer behind things and paint them in either by hand or by using like a freeform selection tool because then you can multiply this stuff on top and not have to get the the strange artifacts and kind of clipping like this because the magic wand tool as nice as it is to have is actually a pretty primitive tool and it usually doesn't make a very good selection without at least a little bit of extra effort uh, one of the other artifacts of that that i can see is that inside your letter forms like here in the a's and the ease there's white space as well as in these little hard to catch areas like right here in the staff and underneath the hat so if you're using like bucket tool and magic wand tool which by the way i don't believe i ever taught either one of those this is why i didn't teach either one of those because they tend to to yield worse results than the way that i was teaching okay. but overall your image is very charming i love the expression on the cat and the the kind of setup for the image so that's really fun the fact that he's got a dead fish as his club is kind of cool too all right any comments or concerns aviel i think i spelled his name wrong you might have what did the what was it in the last one let's see art artemis artemis oh, magic cat <laughs> Art, you went like M-A-S, Artemis. I guess, I don't know if, it, if there's a one accepted spelling of Artemis. There probably is, but you could change it if you wanted to. It wasn't like in stone or anything. So I'm not going to ding you on the spelling of the name, but yeah, that would have been a good thing to, to catch if you had early. Cool. All right. Very good. Thank you. Jimmy. Jimmy's got... A gameplay mock-up. Cool. All right. Yeah, we got kind of a nice silhouette, sort of moonlit environment here with uh, what looks like falls into water, coins to collect, treasure chests, kind of a, a classic platforming adventure sort of thing. And up here we've got our lives, and I'm not sure what potions do, but probably something magical. Kind of a neat kind of setup here. Cool. It's got like a cricket paddle, I think. The only thing that confuses me at all is kind of their eyes look like a bunch of barcodes. 
I'm trying to figure out like what's going. Oh, it's like the pupil is between glowing purple. Okay. And so like, okay, the pupil is between. So the reason I can't tell is because it kind of just looks like two swipes. Whereas probably you needed to fill in the whole eyeball and then make like a separated uh, pupil or something to get that across. But that's just a little bit hard to tell. Okay. There's a couple little technical things here and there. Like your mountains don't quite hit the edge of the screen here or over here. And then some of the drawing and painting is a bit rough still. Like we can tell up here, that's really rough. Probably needed to use a shape tool similar to what you did with the moon. Because the moon looks perfect, whereas that one looks very, very rough. So either rough moon and rough oval, or perfect for both of them. But don't mix those, because then it ends up looking sloppy. Um, the difference between style and inconsistent sloppiness is how effectively you utilize those same rules over and over and over again. So if it was a kind of hand-painted, you know, uh, semi-handcrafted look, then this moon would have that too. But since it doesn't, then it makes it look out of place. Okay. But interesting uh, color and tone. I like the presentation. I could definitely imagine playing this. Good job, Jimmy. Okay. Let's move on to Trevor. Taking a quick look to see if these people are in chat while I'm discussing their stuff. So I don't see Trevor in there, but ah, here we go. Got a nice kind of uh, promo action pose with his cat. The cat looks so smug. Look at that cat. He knows he's done something. <laughs> he's like shattered this thing or whatever it is. Got this milk potion on the ground. I'm not quite sure what's going on with all the shards and like this this form here. I feel like he just broke something or just shattered something. I can't quite tell, but something like that. Okay. Uh, leaves? Maybe like purple leaves. And he's just kind of holding his staff. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. I, I felt like they were crystal shards or something, just because it's similar to his staff. So yeah, generally, I'm liking the, the layout of the design. I like the way that you're presenting everything. The only gripe I would have is that the tools that you're using look kind of primitive right now. you got very, very thick, black, dark lines, which end up kind of looking more like a sketch. And so if you haven't mastered pen pressure so that you can get nice, razor-thin lines and thick lines when you, only when you intend it. That would be something to practice to make sure that you can get nice calligraphy like strokes by using pen pressure. And that's something that really just kind of comes with practice. Um, also copying existing comic book uh, inking would be a good way to go because usually there's a hierarchy that makes it very clear what's in front and what's behind. Typically the things that are closer are going to have thicker outlines and the things farther back are going to have thinner. And then you might even when something is heading towards a prominent feature in the foreground, just chop that line off before it even intersects. And there's this sort of floating area around the line work that makes it stand out even more. So those kinds of rules and uh, typical uses for inking would be a good thing to, to study to improve the quality of your illustration. Okay, Very good. Thank you. I like the special effect shine on the staff as well. Rudy. Let's take a look. Okay, so we got a gameplay mock-up, I think, for our game. Are these, so the potions floating in here, I think that's like health or something like that. Is that right? Oh, Rudy is here, yeah. So if they are, they should probably be floating way uh, up high. Huh. Yeah, there you are. Are those supposed to be like um, keeping track hello? of something for hello, our player? Hello. Yeah, I hear you. Lives, yeah, yeah, you got it. Okay. Lives. So, like, make them float more. way up out of the way. Yeah, because they're in the, the gameplay right now. Yeah. Or, okay. if your entire game okay, okay. always had this ground, then you could put them down in the ground. So you could put them down here where they'll never be in the way. Oh. Um, are you going oh, okay. for like a platforming game? Uh, no, I think I was quite like. Like an adventure game. Yeah, that's a game. Okay. I just or, wanted to be sure. Should I make it to a platforming game? No, I, what I was going to say is if it was a platforming game, these platforms don't look like something I could jump on. But if it's not, then it's just like, yeah, we're wandering along and collecting things and talking to people. Then that's more in keeping with the way that you've drawn it here. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. Okay. Do you have Sorry, any? I was just, I was about to say I could I could, I could go back to like yeah, more of those, you know, to make it like a platform. Yeah, do what now? Lower the mushrooms. Uh, no, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I was just the mushrooms. I was just asking for what you were intending. Oh, okay. That's all. Do you have any uh, questions or? For the Sorry, what? Say again. No, no I don't. Okay. But yeah, get the get the potions okay. out of the way because if they're if they're the HUD potions. or down here, yeah. Okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. Isaiah. Cool. Okay, so we got a, a pixel art take on this, with looks like almost Mega Man style health bars up here, enemy bar, our player bar. And it appears like he's casting a magic spell right now that's going to go impact this big gorilla-like uh, hedge kitty, which is pretty cool. Nice kind of um, flat side-scrolling setup. Uh, Isaiah here? Let's see. I don't see him. So what I would wonder is if it is a intention to make this a platforming game, again, we don't really have platforms or anything other than a flat ground. If it's more like a Mega Man style like fighting game, then that makes sense where we just kind of have a screen that we can jump around and do our stuff in. And usually those boss battle screens were pretty plain anyway. Um, but it's a little unclear as to what it's supposed to be. That's all. Cool. The health bars. Yeah, the health bars are cool. And I actually like the, the characters as well. Very nice. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. Elias. Nice. Great. Yeah, we got a nice little promo set up here with our main character posing in front of like some bad guys in a castle. Looks very fun. I like our, our uh, graphic design here for our typography is pretty cool. Artemis. It's a little bit hard to read uh, both of the typefaces. I would maybe formalize them just a little bit more to make them easy to understand. But as we didn't really cover any of that in curriculum or anything, then it's kind of understandable that it might be a bit harder to read. <laughs> yeah, this is fun. I like the glowing eyed bat, little ghost, and a nice cool castle in the background there. And the special effects on the rod are particularly cool looking. I like the stylized multiple rings effect here. Very cool. Good job. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Elias. Jasmine. Uh-oh. Nothing in Jasmine's folder. If she's here, okay, I don't see her here. Hopefully she'll drop that in as quick as she can. Ethan. Let's take a look. Ethan's got, hey, yeah, you. You got a, a boss fight happening here? Yeah, I had a little bit of trouble picking this one. Cool. You got uh, health bar, probably magic bar. Looks like potions. Here's your lives. And it's raining down stars onto our bad guy here. Makes sense hey, to me. I remember I saw the stat. Hmm? I don't know who made stats, because I remember there was one guy who made like one image with the cat and a bunch of stats. Mm -hmm. And I really loved the stats he made, and my favorite one was the, was the star one, so I remade it. Nice. And my idea was just like, okay, so I'm guessing it would be probably like raining down stars or something. Sure. Yeah. I like it. What's the bad guy? It looks like maybe a big clock or something. It, it's kind of like a mechanical kind of like robot. But like... <laughs> It, it kind of has that kind of feeling like a clock. Mm -hmm. When I when I was designing, I kind of just rolled with what came through my mind, and when I the like Thunder part, I'm like, okay, this kind of feels I don't know. It, like you said, it kind of like a, a clock, kind of like. So that's not what you had in mind for like the face, because it looks like clock hands to me. I didn't have like any mind when it came to the face, and like you said, it kind of the first thing that came to mind was like, okay, kind of something like clock or something. I should probably. Is it just an eyeball? Yeah, sort of. Maybe if you wanted to be more like an eyeball, change the material on the inside to something else because that'll make it feel like it's semi-transparent or a camera or like glass or something. Because as rivets, then it's the same metal and it makes me feel like, oh, okay, maybe those are positions on a dial or something and that this is a clock. So that's what's making that feel that way. You got okay. One or two little uh, technical things. There's a couple pieces here and there that are kind of uh, messed up a little little bits of blue pixels out of place here up at the top 
um, little bits of fill missing on your robot's leg down here. Just here and there, not too much major, but little things that would probably be good to fix up before tomorrow and just resubmit. Uh, one thing as a design note is that the outline color that you've picked for the robot is a little bit too similar to the trees in the background and the dark sky so that it's hard to focus on them. It's hard to tell him apart from that stuff. So if you distanced those colors from each other a bit more, then he would pop out more. So because you've got a gray fill on your robot, the outline color for his body is probably appropriate where it is. And you should just darken down the trees in the sky a bit more, and then it will pop a bit more. Okay, that's kind of, I wanted like a kind of color to the sky as well as the trees. And that's but, what I can do about like fixing the blue. But if you do that, this black times three would need to be the same color as the outline for the robot, because then it will be completely invisible. And right now it's kind of hard to see. Yeah. So just use the cat fur color for the, the text up here and it will pop a lot more. Then you're free to darken down the background and no problem. We'll be able to see it. Oh, everything. that one. Yeah. No, you got it. Okay. And what about the background? Uh, just make it a bit darker so that these things pop more. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank you. And these are all the pis <laughs> the Piscal files. You don't need to I'm include sorry. those, but... Yeah, no, it's it's all right. I mean, if you want to leave them in there, I know which one is the final. I left them in there actually on purpose because in case everyone would like look around and see how I did it. Uh, yeah, sometimes I do, so it's okay to leave them in there. But yeah, the PNG will be the one I I grade. Okay. Right. No, I understand. I I know I know it's the PNG you grade. I just wanted to like leave them. I always leave them in there just so that way you can I don't know do something with them, look at them. Or yeah, that's fair enough. It. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm. I'm <laughs> I know it's not that good, but I hope you like it. It's okay. You did fine. Thank you. Crystal. Wow, cool. Crystal's very cool. I think she's turned the, the idea into a JRPG, though. That's what it seems. It was like kind of her bent. She seemed to really like that um, more dramatic kind of story-focused uh, concept. Look at the, the space effects over here. Those are pretty cool. I think we got a couple custom brushes happening in there to make the, the particular complex shapes uh, in that nebula kind of pop but yeah very nice we got two cool characters like glowing special effects of the line work great background some complexity back there we can see sort of a medieval town sparkly kind of special effects neat very fun I would say for a full promo piece the only thing we're missing is a title just something to say what the name of the game is and Maybe to say, you know, out in 2021 or something like that. Very cool. Thank you. All right, Sophie, the person who had the idea in the first place. Let's see what they've done. Nice. Very fun. Yeah. So now this, this guy has evolved into a completely bush-shaped cat ogre, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, and we've got the little tiny kitty... Um, flowers popping up off the top and off the head which is really fun as well i'm really enjoying the overall lighting and environment where we've got the glowing staff with the special effects and it appears to be lighting the nearby tree and the ground here which kind of draws our eye into the nice place to look right here in the the character yeah this is fun good character pose really fun to look at i'm loving the little uh navi-esque uh ball that maybe that's your uh, tutorial guide or something like that. And the bottles of milk for health or lives. Yeah. Very fun. Well, I think that some of your guys' ideas probably had an influence. You know, some of this, I think, probably came from other people's concepts, which added to this original concept, which is great. All right. Very good. Sophie, you got anything you want to add or, or say? I think we all had a fun time using your concept. Yeah, good up to you. I like how toy like the, the magic looks. The cartoony art style just really works. Mm -hmm. You type in something. I like how we can kind of feel that this is illuminating on the cat's brim and like the fur and on that tree back there.
It looks so good. Mm -hmm. I see she's typing something. Yeah, she is. Give us your words of wisdom, buddy. <laughs> says, thank you. I love seeing everyone's take on my game idea. It was so fun. Well, thank you very much for the great idea that everybody enjoyed. Thank you, Sophie. This was very fun. Yeah. All right. Yesenia, we've got two. Looks like we've got a gameplay mock-up and, and a sort of promo picture. Cool. And a lot of character in both of them. Let's take a look. Yeah, I love the big, giant, mushroom forest kind of background. It makes it really cool. And the fact that it fades down into sort of a fog down here really does a little bit of world building for us. Makes it feel dangerous to be down there. Floating in a bubble milk bottle. Yep, with a little cow on it. And this appears to be either like a rival wizard or a bad guy or something. I think, oh, this is a, um, it's a ferret. <laughs> or a mouse, maybe. Cool. Having their little wizard stool. Very cool. And we can even see up at the top um, the health bar. Now let's take a look at the promo one as well. <laughs> All the different characters. What's going on here? Oh, they're trying to wake them up? Oh, no. <laughs> they're going to wake them up with the spray bottle. Of, <laughs> a spell of spray bottle. Drooling on this tree limb. <laughs> fun. Very good. Yeah, these are all very full, very fun to look at. All right, let's see, can I contribute anything as far as advice? I guess the only thing I would say is that for the UI portion, it could pop a bit more in places from the background. The white outline pops very well, and I can see, but his name and this little symbol in the corner, I can't quite see because it's the similar colors and contrast. The rule of thumb for UI is that it should be one of the most contrasted things on the screen so that you can always read it. So black and white are typical or very, very bright colors and very, very dark colors combined make it so that high contrast is always visible against everything else. And then for this one, the only thing I noticed is that the trunks of the trees kind of all blend together into one shape. So down here, where we're seeing a separate tree right next to this big branch, it'd be nice to get some tonal difference so that we could tell something is in front and something is in back. Typically, the way that you would do that in bright sunshine is that the farther away something is, the more sky colored it is. So in this case, your sky is blue. So you would merge a little bit of blue with this brown and it would sort of lighten up and sort of appear to be visible through distant air so the stuff up front would be the most contrasted and then it would get less and less and less contrasted until it was all the way like this castle in the very background. Now this stuff that you've got is nearby, so I would only use a little bit of that, but a little bit goes a long way to really separate out those things. Cool. All right, very good. And thank you for doing both of them. That's great. Do you have anything you want to add? Thank you. So one more look at the other one. There we go. Excellent. Yeah, I love the fog effect. The fog effect worked really well. It was fun painting them. Well, good. I'm glad it was. Isaac. <clears throat> nice. So we got another pixel art take on this. I do love the cat with the staff held by the tail. I think that's a hilarious idea. And so <laughs> I'm really enjoying that. Uh, so we got nice UI up here, decent background, and what appears to be, um, it's like a Medusa plant or something. Oh, it's really creepy looking. I can see almost like Frosty the Snowman arms and sort of like a wrapped viney body. It's super scary. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Yeah, this is fun. This looks like maybe a retro inspired game that I could really get into. Very cool. <laughs> and having a cat casting spells from their tail would be a very funny thing to see. It almost looks like he's got like a saddle on. Like there's another character that might ride around on him or something. <laughs> yeah, it's a little little kitty backpack. Nice. 
He can grab things out of it with his tail. Very good. All right. Thank you. Jessica. I don't see Jessica in the chat. Nice. We've got a, a kind of poster-like promo image of Artemis and the magic of whiskers. <laughs> That's a great rename. And I like the typeface that we've got here. Uh, one thing I would just say is don't run outside the frame with the, the type. Um, it makes us a little uncomfortable and feel like, uh, is there something over here I'm missing? Uh, just scoot that stuff in a little bit more. But yeah, that's a really cool uh, handmade typeface. Very fun, especially down here where we've got the full title. I uh, like the cat perched on it as well. We've got creepy skeletal zombie cat main character right here looking a lot more formal than in some of the others fun right on what's going on with the sky the sky looks like very magical or apocalyptic cool texture on it as well uh, one other note i'll just make for um just critiquing the brick pattern that you've got on the tower is a little odd because it's going flat across whereas the towers are going up and so the bricks really would be wrapping around the barrel shape of that tower the way you've drawn it. And the fact that they're not makes it a bit uncomfortable. Like it's one of those textures in a cartoon that doesn't follow the character. Probably wasn't intended, not sure if it is or not, but just a little nitpick that I would say. Um, because it probably saved time to maybe draw some brick and like copy paste it, but it degraded the quality just a little bit by doing that. Very cool. Oh, look at his little heart-shaped nose. I missed it. Since the color of the nose is the same as the fur, I kind of missed that he had this cute little heart-shaped nose. So maybe giving that a color as well would be a good thing. All right. Very good. Thank you, Jessica. And Nathan. Oh, okay. Concepts used. Original. Final in case I don't finish. <laughs> That's original. Okay, so there's your sketch. Nice. Cool. Especially the magic effect. The magic effect is really cool. Ghost piranha shooting out in this beam, kind of lighting up this now stone-like ogre cat is really fun. Cool. I don't know what the beam represents, but I guess he's using it right now, like full magic power. It almost looks like a fish. Full fish magic power. Cool. And so he's like mid-jump or something, his partner going up here to get like this fireball yarn nice i could really imagine playing this this has a, a very castle crashers vibe which i know is one of the the concepts that you he was looking at he's here right where is he oh, yeah. oh there you are yeah i see you turned your icon into little kitty cat as well actually i based it on someone else's concept i didn't base nice. it on mine very good well it looks great do you want to add anything um, this was fun. It was a fun one. Very good. I'm glad it was. Yeah, got a great result out of it. I guess to nitpick, like I've been doing for everybody, maybe change the color of the, the text because we're on dark colors right now. But in the fullness of a game, what's very likely they would do is have black text with a white outline or um, white text with a black outline because then it doesn't matter if you're in a bright environment or a dark environment, you can always read it or to put the text inside the placard, because then it would always be visible as well. All right. All right. So just a UI note. Nice, and I love the, the eyeballs menacing in the background all over the place, that's really cool. Thank you. All right, Salvo. Magic Cat, there he is. So he's kind of center stage, almost like a circus ringmaster casting his own title <laughs> i like it cool makes for a good promo we've got our title we've got our menacing eyes back in the trees and a nice little spotlight colorful spotlight for him to sit in very good all right salvo do you have anything you want to comment on this yeah yeah <laughs> so I was working on the shadow 
Uh huh. Uh, for the trees, I tried to fix that, but maybe I did it too too much. Uh, so I, I think I need to fix that. Oh, you I need to fix that. Like on the ground shadow, or like on the trunks. the whole background it was just too I, I guess I need to like fix it properly it seems like it's too dark maybe, maybe it's, too, it's like too light it's pretty dark yeah. I could tell you what I would do is treat the trunks like a cylinder and then draw a line in my head from the center of the cat over to the trunk and just put kind of a, a light stripe on the part that I hit because that would be the part facing towards the cat so going up and down the tree I'd have like a light bit on this side or in the middle or on this side because that would make it feel like the the magic is illuminating the near facing sides of those cylinders does that help yes cool all right well thank you very much very good robert how'd it go it went. There it is. We've got it. We've got our UI up here with, I guess, power, hits, and lives. And then our ogre guy kind of chasing him across what's going to be this chasm. You're going to have like a Lord of the Rings, you shall not pass moment coming up? Yes. <laughs> did I did I just make that up? And you're just like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, that's how it works, right? Perfect. Yeah. All right. Anything to add? Not really. All right, thank you. And one. Nice. Yeah, so one had this, uh, I think he's the one who came up with this different design for the cat, which I really enjoy. I like the, the alternate kind of design. And especially that now we've got like these magical kind of, you know, surface markings on the cat as well. So he's obviously fighting this uh, zombie guy. He's got a health bar over top, more of an adventure game kind of take. Uh, I'm a little distracted by the super stoked cat that's looking out of this tree. I think it's meant to be an owl, but because we've got the little pointy ears and this, which maybe is a beak, maybe is a mouth, it looks like a very excited person <laughs> watching this fight. And so I keep being drawn to that. Like, I'm looking at that repeatedly. <laughs> but it's a very fun image. Cool. Is Juan here? Yeah, he's here. You have anything to add, Juan? He's typing something. A couple little blemishes here and there, like Phil not quite lined up with the tree in the background. Looks like something maybe got scooted a little bit. And if that's a stylistic choice, then that's fair. It's only happening in the background. You could have had a lot more work. Well, sure, but look, it is what it is, and it's a very good image, and it's fun. That's always going to be the case. You'll almost certainly run out of time before you run out of ideas and effort, you know. But it's good to let something go, move on to the next thing, and if there's anything that you wish you would have done, apply it to the next piece of work and not obsess over one of them. Always take more attempts rather than perfecting one attempt. You get a lot more practice that way and you learn a lot more because you're freer when you're first starting a project. Um, you're a lot less free when you're trying to edit something, and you can edit it to death. So beware of that. All right. All right, very good. So that's the whole group of them. Way to go, guys. You did it. You survived a COVID-19 quarter without going crazy. Debatable. Debatable. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have any final questions or thoughts for us before we wrap it up? Are you still having um, something going on this Friday, or are you not going to do it anymore? Do you want me to show up on Friday and answer questions that you have? I mean, I, personally for me, I don't really have anything, but I'm just asking if you're still doing that. Well, if nobody requests it, then no. So if someone wants to request, like, hey, I want to come in on Friday, and I want to work on this, and I want to see how you do that, then I will. But if not, then I'll just play video games. I mean grade, of course. I'm going to do my grading. No, not playing video games. 
No, that's on Saturday. <laughs> no, Saturday's the day I've actually quote said I'll work. <laughs> Stream this quote unquote grading. Uh, that'd be funny. <laughs> I do have an actual question though about cool. uh, pixel art, mm -hmm. and we're going about getting concept art and stuff like that. What is the best way to to test out or or what am I looking for? Doodle your 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 art and like try to get. Oh yeah, art. it's really hard to draw pixel art. You have to kind of just construct it. I would recommend construct your pixel art with a single color against a solid background just to see if the proportions and size and details are going to work before you ever fill anything in or add any additional detail sort of like a, uh, a lattice work or an outline but it's a lot more architectural than typical cartoon drawing and so you really just kind of have to experiment uh, Juan's got a question here for class 6b is 2d animation covered as well um, for 6b 2D animation could be covered, but I'm not going to be teaching that one Ron is. We're actually trading off. I'm going to be doing, um, wait, which one is this? This is 5. Oh, I'm sorry. 6B. Yes, 3D animation will be covered. Rigging 2D will not. So the 6 series classes is the 3D side. The 5 series classes is the 2D side. So for 5AB, 2D animation might be covered in 5B potentially, but Ron is going to um, teach that. I'm going to be teaching 6B so that I can teach rigging and animation primarily. Okay, But for 6B, something like sculpture and high fidelity texturing could be covered, but not when I'm going to be running the class because my specialty is rigging and animation, that more interactive side. Okay? And that's the spring? In spring, yes. So yeah, if I were to, let's just do a little example for your question though. If I grab Piscal real fast, and then we just say like, what is a what is a thing that I might draw? How about like fast food cup? Fast food cup. I would be looking for what angle am I going to have to draw this on? What kind of details might work for fast food? Like the Wendy's face might not work so well. The Arby's hat might not work so well because it's very small, or a Starbucks logo would be too small. But something more standard, like solid colors, a bit too boring. Stripes is pretty good. Swirly stripes would be very hard in pixel art. But like the Carl's Jr. star is a nice big symbol that would be easier. Or any kind of circular logo would be easier as well for pixel art. Um, the classic Coca Cola thing is neat, but maybe it's a bit too on the nose. And so I'd be looking for. What are the details I'm going to include? What are the sizes and shapes and angles that I'm going to make this cup? And then basically I'd come in here and just start like trying to I'd probably use the stroke tool at first, shape this cup in a way that I'm going to get a nice pattern that's going to make sense. Like what's the angle I'm going to want to stick to? So maybe four, four pixels up. So let's see, that's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I could start with that first three and then do four for the rest of them. That'd be okay. Do something symmetrical. See if it feels right. So something like that. Cap it off. Am I going to want to overhang the lid? Am I going to want to pop up the lid like this? It started looking like coffee when I did that. Am I going to need to try to include perspective like an ellipse to make this work properly this so this is sort of like a big experiment where I'm just within this initial grid trying to see can I make this work at all before I put it into a more complex kind of situation does that make sense yeah I think so yeah so I can like let's get rid of some of the bottom here and then try to use an ellipse and see like is that gonna help is that confusing? Or maybe I just drop it down one pixel like that and that'll do the trick. And I could figure out, okay, can I add some believable rounding to this lid without it looking crazy? Maybe. Not exactly. Right? So it might take a lot of experimenting actually to figure out 
what's going to work best. I could start getting rid of this interior if it's distracting. That's kind of how I sketch in pixel art. Is I just sort of like start constructing it, thinking about does this look nice to me or not? And frequently, don't look at your pixel art, look at the thumbnail. The thumbnail is going to be a better representation of what you're doing. I think now what I've achieved here is a decent looking cup in that zoomed out thumbnail view, but it definitely doesn't look like fast food. So I might take that and then start adding extra elements to it, like where are the little pop uh, buttons on the top going to go? Do I want to raise a center platform for like where the straw comes out, angle the straw, put decals on the cup, that sort of thing. And then maybe eventually I get to a place where I think, yeah, this will work, and I include it in my work. Cool. Do you think it would help to, say, build it in, like, Minecraft to get a sort of idea what the angle might look like? Um, maybe. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. For me, I'm more of, like, a cartoonist than, like, a sculptor. So I would be thinking along the lines of stylization and what's the world I'm trying to fit it into. So probably I'd go like flat side on pretty quickly and maybe more graphical like this. Like I really like how that looks. So I'd be looking for ways to integrate that kind of thing. If you're going for more realism, like a, a rounded volumetric kind of pixel art, then you kind of have to look at other references and resources. Like cartoons are always a good place to draw from, but photos work too, sculptures work too. It's all about what you're after. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. All right. Any other questions, you guys? And what's the official consensus on should I come in on Friday and do some demos? Because we're at the end of the quarter. I can do whatever you want. doesn't have to be a part of curriculum. Or we can all take an early end of the quarter and play video games. <laughs> I mean, I'm cool with that, the Friday thing. If you got something specific, I'll come in. Tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll show up on Friday just in the channel. If anybody shows up and asks me questions, I'll answer whatever you got. Okay? All right. That's what we'll do. All right, you guys. Thank you very much. Good job. Have a happy holiday season. And if you are in 6B or 7, I will see you in the spring quarter. If not, have a good time. Hopefully you do well in your studies. Yep, see you later. Bye-bye.